is Squawk Box. I'm Mark Haynes. The opening bell now just 28 and a half minutes away. In studio, guest host Terry McGraw, chairman and CEO of McGraw-Hill. Economic growth of the third quarter revised sharply higher, 4.3% instead of the original 3.8%. Take into account the fact that the hurricanes probably knocked things down, <clears throat> and you got to wonder what the real growth, for, as Steve put, pro forma growth, would have been. Steve Lee. Yeah, you might add a percentage point, but this is outstanding growth, Mark. Revised higher, you said, to 4.3% from the originally reported 38 The best showing for the U.S. economy since the first quarter of 2004. So rather than the expected slowdown, it's the unexpected acceleration, a full point higher than growth in the second quarter. And some estimates are that the hurricane in September, as Mark just suggested, may have shaved a full percentage point off of growth. So absent the storm effect, the U.S. economy really rocking the last quarter. But our next guest is not buying the strong growth story. Joining us, Peter Schiff. President of Euro Pacific Capital. Good morning, Peter. Morning. So, wh what's wrong with this story? We see 4.3 percent growth, higher by a full percentage point than the second quarter. No sense of let up in the consumer. What am I missing here? Well, again, I don't think what we're measuring is growth. I think what we're measuring is consumption. Basically, you know, almost 75 to 80 percent of our GDP now is made up of consumption, and the problem is that consumption is financed by debt. It's financed by borrowing. It's not sustainable. I think what's who, who, the economies that are really growing are the Asian economies that are supplying all the merchandise that we're consuming. But the problem is our country is not turning out those products ourselves. So our economy is not really growing, but certainly our consumption is. And I think in the future we're going to have to pay for this. All this consumption today is going to come at the expense of much reduced consumption in the future when we have to pay all the interest on the money that we borrow. I, I, I don't disagree with you that the debt is going to have to come off. We, we, we can't keep borrowing what is now 6.3 percent of GDP. But the question is, if we keep bringing in stuff from abroad, and whatever it is we're doing with that, turning that into growth, for example, getting parts and putting them into higher value added things, sending the lower value added stuff abroad, bringing it back in, that's net growth well, for the U.S. economy. We're not economy. turning it into growth. We're turning it into debt. That's the problem. And we're able to service the debt right now because interest rates are still artificially low. You know, despite the fact that rates have come up quite a bit, I think real rates are still negative in the United States. I no, think they're, they're going they're, a lot higher. They're, they're, they're positive, well, depending well, on what, what inflation measure you use. Well, that's you right. Have... I'm not going to use the government's well, phony numbers. I'm going to look at even, But even if you look at the headline inflation, it's still higher than uh, the, the Fed funds rate. Um, I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, not being an economist, we're able to service the debt because interest rates are artificially low. Right, as, we have a lot of as short interest term debt. rates, but as interest rates rise, will we not attract more? Capital? Well, it's going to be a lot more expensive to pay that interest. And I don't think as nominal rates rise, we're going to attract more capital because people are going to look at the real rate. You know, since the last time I was in the studio, the price of gold has risen by over $60 an ounce. That's a tremendous loss of purchasing power in the dollar. And I think as the people around the world, I don't who are, buy gold. Well, you should be. I mean, it's up sixty dollars since I've been here. The average person doesn't buy gold. Not now. Who cares what the price of gold is? Well, you should care. I, I mean, care people... about the price of bread and milk and a college <laughs> education. Gold. Well, who cares? Well, you're, in, in a few years, you'll probably care, but you should care right now. I mean, it's a very important measure of purchasing power. And when people around the world who are already overloaded with dollars, and especially foreign central banks, overloaded, they're... Peter, they keep buying more of them. Here's a fact: forget about buying our debt, okay? Foreign direct investment in the U in the world. Which is the number one country that attracts capital? But we're, we're not ninety billion to the U.S. and fifty or sixty right, or whatever it is to China. China is still number two compared to the U.S. But the money US. coming in the United States is not coming here to build factories to take That's advantage. That's FDI, Peter. That's foreign well, direct investment. Well, it's the, buying our assets, bu building well, factories, whatever FDI ends up being. Buying existing assets. Is. I don't look at if they're just buying assets. Well, well you don't know what FDI us. goes into. Well, FDI well, 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 let them finish. Let well, finish. let's agree on what FDI Let make us. Well, I think we're borrowing to consume. We're not borrowing to produce. If, it, and if the investment was coming to the United States for productive reasons, we'd have a trade surplus, not a trade deficit. What is foreign we'd be investment if not productive they're, investment? They're not. They're lending us money to That's consume. That's not lending. lending. That's us FDI. Well, let's, let's get our well, are, you to, are you talking about then if they're just buying publicly traded stocks and corporate Whatever, debt? They're buying assets. They're either buying right, and assets now we've or got to, And now we've got to pay interest on those assets. We've got to pay dividends on those assets. I don't think they're coming in here and, and investing in building factories, building plants that are churning out products that we're exporting. Terry, Terry does Peter make sense to you? 
I think the uncertainty that people have in the market is uh, is because you know people do see a lot of the dark clouds and uh, and some can develop that kind of a uh, sort of a, a doom and gloom sort of scenario. I think though that it uh, you know when we start talking about investment levels and we start talking about some of the consumption, I think we're looking at a much healthier picture. Uh, going, you know, take a look at oil uh, and, the, uh, and, and where the spikes were. Uh, we were saying all the things that it was going to do to the consumer and all the things that it was going to do to hold them back, it didn't. Uh, values in housing, uh, you still are at very high levels. Still, uh, but they're not, they're not going to stay there. And the consumer has been able to continue to go deeper into debt to stay one, he one step ahead of no, you know, these credit no, card bills. There's but no question, Peter, that the consumer debt levels uh, you know, are very high, uh, and it is a source of concern, uh, no question. But uh, I do think uh, that with some of that consumption, uh, government spending as well, uh, and you're going to see an, an opportunity for more business uh, investment as well. And I, therefore, I think the uh, overall economy is going to do a lot better than we think. Real quick for Peter, last word, we've got to wrap it up. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about gold, because I know that you know, the price of gold has been rising. I know your guests that have been on the show recently have been scratching their heads trying to figure out why it's going up. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, as someone who's been buying it for five or six years, it's got nothing to do with uh, the demand for jewelry in India. It's going up because of inflation. It's going up because of a loss in confidence generally around the world of the world savers, not just in the dollar, you know, but in the euro, in the yen, in the renminbi, because the supply Supplies of those currencies are rising very rapidly right now, and the supply of gold is not. It's quite constrained. Okay, we got to wrap it up right there. Okay, Peter. thanks very much, Peter Schiff of Euro Capitals, Euro Pacific, Euro -Pacific Capital. Capital.